Nothing strikes fear in the hearts of precious metals investors like the idea of government confiscation. But what did we learn from the Wall Street Journal, an article out just a few days ago that talks about the government's ability to almost indirectly confiscate metals from us, but also maybe even more, a lot more done through the tax code. This is a big story that we need to talk about, but we also want to talk about the threat of a depression. Okay, nobody wants to talk about it. Everybody talks about a soft landing. They want to talk to us about the economy doing great. Maybe a recession, right? We talk about that quite often on this show. But what about a depression? And what signs do we have right now that make the prospect of a depression maybe more likely than many of us want to even realize? And are we prepared as precious metals investors? Look, I think we could easily see a silver price next year. Who knows? 50, 60, maybe even that triple digit silver $100 that Keith Newmeyer, the CEO of First Majestic Silver, is so fond to talk about. Can you even imagine? Do you think it's even possible? I challenge you, right, to think outside the box. We've shown charts of what's happened in countries like Venezuela. We talked about that last night. The price of silver went up by like 200 times in the matter of just months in Venezuela. Now, I'm not proposing that we are Venezuela. There are differences, absolutely. But it just shows what can happen if and I'm not saying it will, but if we reach a currency crisis situation. That's not what this video is about. This video is about a lot more. Let's get, let's dive in right now. Can a depression happen? That's the question I asked myself last night. We know one big thing that's going on right now that really hasn't happened since the Great Depression. The money supply in the United States is shrinking. The amount of money that's in bank accounts, that's in money market accounts, that's in CDs. Look, you can get real technical. You can Google it for yourself if you want to learn about it. But there's the M1 money supply and there's the M2 money supply. And the M2 money supply is shrinking. And that's the first time in a long, long time that we've actually seen the money supply shrinking, right? We live in an environment where there's money printing. Could we be barreling towards a depression? A lot of the top analysts are alarmed by this fact that we have a shrinking money supply in this country. The other big component, and we've talked about this, basement dwellers, many, many times, that, that series of interest rate hikes, and we're going to hear from Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve this week. It's going to be a big, massive, massive week for the silver price and gold price. And don't forget, we're also going to talk about this Wall Street Journal article. I'm going to mention it to you one more time later in this video that has to do with confiscation, indirect confiscation, but confiscation nonetheless. However, right, this lag effect, we're going to hear from Jerome this week. They're not going to do anything. They're not going to raise rates. But the market will react to what he says, right? And he's scared right now. However, the series of interest rate hikes that were pulled off by the Fed over the last probably 19 months now were the fastest in the history of the country. Not the highest rate, right? Because in the 80s, they got rates all the way up to 14, 15%, no matter what it was. But the speed at which they did it, critical for you to understand this key, key component to interest rate hikes. When they raise interest rates, let's say, a year ago, right? Let's just say, let's say January of 2023. It takes six months to 18 months for that to feed into the economy. It's a delayed, it's a lag effect. So right now we are just in the meat of feeling the effects of all these interest rate hikes, and it will continue to put downward constricting pressure on the economy. The world is mad at us, okay? If we talk specifically about the United States, the world is fed 
up with the United States. We don't realize that because we live in our little United States of America bubble. But you go outside of the United States and we aren't held in the highest of regards by what appears to be, and I don't like it, the founding fathers don't like it, you probably don't like it either, but it's just the reality of the situation, unfortunately, that a lot of the world is growing um, frustrated to put it nicely, with the United States, right? You know what's going on with BRICS. You know what's, I mean, it, I won't go down that rabbit hole, but the world is changing like never before during our lifetimes. And as all these things come together, right? The financial mismanagement, this M2 money supply shrinking, the lag effects of all these previous, it feels like they may be setting us up for a crisis. Some people think, right? That they set us up for a crisis so that we panic and we get scared. And then they can shove a CBDC, a central bank digital currency, down everyone's throats, right? Now, maybe that's a bit of a conspiracy theory. I don't know, right? But nonetheless, there are there's a, there's a, a segment of people out there and a lot of people within the silver and gold community that believe that would be the case, that a depression could be used as cover to force a CBDC down upon the people because people get scared. People don't know where their next meal, their money, there's a crisis going on, right? Then they'll say, okay, fine, you know, and they, they come. Now, the Fed Now program that was just rolled out, what, seven weeks ago? could be the infrastructure that was put in place. It'd be like a new water line being installed in your neighborhood and the CBDC being the final phase of that, meaning that you're then forced to hook your house up to the new water line. We've used that analogy before to talk about this. Uh, America, oh, let me ask you a question. Most of you are here in America. It feels like to me, not only is the world a little fed up with the United States, and again, I don't like this. I was born here. I'm a patriot. I love my country. But I sure get the sense that my fellow Americans are kind of fed up with America as well, fed up with the politicians. And in a lot of ways, it feels like Americans are fed up with each other. There's a divide in this country that I think it feels like socially um, could be the signs of some very difficult times ahead. And on top of that, on top of all this, I mean, 2000, I talked with, actually, I have an Andy Sheckman interview coming out in just a few hours. I would highly recommend, and he did most of the talking, okay? When we're on these live streams, I'm sorry, you're tortured, having to listen to me the whole time, but Andy did most all the talking during our interview, which is great because I want to learn from him. I want you to be able to learn from him. He paints a picture, and it's not just him, but it's a lot of people that are painting a picture that 2024 has the makings to be very interesting, very scary in a lot of ways as well. Are you prepared? Are you prepared emotionally, like mentally, right, for, for what could be some challenging times? We don't know for sure it's going to happen. I'm not trying to be doom and gloom, oh my God, the sky is falling, whatever. But if you look at things on a worldwide basis, a national basis, on top of it all, I almost forgot to finish my point, nationally here in the United States, we have a presidential election coming up, right, in less than 11 months that is going to prove to be potentially one of the most contentious, um, uh, I, don't, I don't know what the right word is to describe it. You know what I'm saying. The left and the right vehemently are closed-minded. I consider myself to be an open, are you open-minded? Huh? Huh? Uh, if you are, I think you are. I think most basement dwellers are pretty open-minded. If you're open-minded, type O or zero. You know, I don't think we can tell the difference. <laughs> Look at my little O. I did it. I think you're open-minded. And I know you're open-minded because you're willing to go against the herd and to be what I would like to call a silver and gold enthusiast, right? You aren't with the herd. You're away. You are the one. Or do you consider yourself... I consider you to be like the one in 200. I don't know what the exact number is. One in 236 Americans 
okay, if you're in America, that knows the value of precious metals. People are starting to wake up. Who was I talking to? I was talking to a couple younger 30-year-old-ish guys yesterday. They're starting to wake up. Okay, people are, but we're still, we're still like one, one in 224 people. So you do have the courage, and I salute you for that, to be willing to speak up, pull your head out of the sand, and look at what is going on. So 2024, unfortunately, isn't looking good. And now, don't forget, we got the Wall Street Journal with a very interesting, this has to do with the Supreme Court. Yes, the Supreme Court. And yes, I'm going to call it what I think it might be, confiscation, potentially. Okay, very interesting. Remember bank bail-ins? When your bank account, suddenly you wake up one morning and 10% of your money could be gone? Bank bail-ins, right? Okay, we're going to talk about that as well. But first, let's talk about this depression a little bit more that we could be heading into. Yes, you'll be safe with silver and gold. We're going to face one of two things, okay? It's going to happen one of two ways as this whole situation unfolds. We're either going to have option A, which nobody talks about, right? A depression. Deflation is the other big word. Now, I cannot reiterate this to you enough. Deflation, yeah, you say, oh, the price goes down, the price goes down, silver will go down, gold will go down. Yeah, that initially that could happen. Nothing will strike fear into the hearts of the central bankers like deflation. You don't have to just listen to me. Listen to anyone who knows anything about the central banking system. Deflation will freak them out, and they will do one thing, and they will do one thing quicker than you could ever imagine, and that is liquidate the entire system, right? And you guys have liquidated me with thumbs up. I always ring the bell 10 times when we get to 100 thumbs up. This is the three-second bell warning. I'm going to ring it 10 times. This is a great time for me also to mention this four-ounce American Silver Eagle round will be given away on Christmas Eve Eve. I'm making a little short video about it today. I'll have links to that video where you'll leave a comment, like all my other giveaways. And then during the Christmas Eve Eve live stream, I will pick one random comment and I will ship that to you immediately. Okay? So that's the option A. Depression. Deflation. Fed freaks. Fed prints. The price of silver and gold go through the roof. It's unlikely we're going to have deflation a depression scenario for very, very long. But if it happens, it will be violent and it could present a great opportunity for you to pick up some additional metals. You may want to have some dry powder. I'm not giving financial advice, but be prepared. What most likely option B, which is what we're seeing play out right in real time right now is an inflating away of the debt. Inflation, inflation, inflation. And many people think we could be heading for a second wave of major inflation. And if we think about what's going on in the big picture throughout the world, okay, major changes afoot that will that will um, prohibit the central banks, right? You got to think about. I want you to think about this, okay? Over the last fifty years. Since President Nixon temporarily took the United States off the gold standard, we were the hegemony, the hegemony, the hegemony, whatever, however you pronounce that word. We were the world power, okay? Our, that, that allowed the Fed to, uh, to do a lot of things that could kind of, that, that could be, that would be received favorably or forced down the throat of the rest of the world. Now with BRICS and BRICS Plus, guys, this is really a majority of the world's population, a majority of the world's economic power that is aligning against us that somewhat limits and neuters the Fed's ability to, to inflate away, right, to export, have you heard that saying, export inflation in the United States, all right? So even under the inflationary, that's how 
inflation can go from regular inflation to potentially more hyperinflation. And have we had hyperinflation over the last few years? Do you remember going to the grocery store three years ago? What did $100 get you at the grocery store three years years ago compared to what $100 gets you at the grocery store today. I would say you're getting 30 to 40% less today. It feels that way to me than three years ago. So we are dealing with this inflation. And this is, this is critical for you to understand. Money printing and inflation is a hidden tax. Okay, think about it. When the government needs more money, they've got two options. All right, they can raise your taxes, right? And that would help maintain the value of the currency, which in the United States is the US dollar. If they raised taxes, we need all this money to help fund these wars that we're going on. They raise taxes, right? And people don't like that, right? It's not good for politicians either. Or, or they can do it in a hidden, covert way. They can do it by printing money, right? That's why inflation is a hidden tax. They can just print the money because they're not constrained by the gold standard or the silver standard. They can just print the money. That creates inflation, but people, people are much more much, right? What's your experience? It's, this, is, this is just a fact. People are much more apt to accept inflation than they are to accept a, a rise in their taxes, right? Like you get them, you get them secretly. You, they get us slowly, and we don't really notice, right? Well, I went to the grocery store, and you know, bananas were 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 twenty five cents each. Now they're thirty cents. Eh, not that big of a deal, right? Uh, but if they say we're going to raise your taxes by twelve percent, people freak out. So the easier, softer way is to inflate it away. I didn't mean to get into a deep economic discussion with you, but at the end of the day, this inflation or deflation, no matter how you slice it or dice it, right? The value of silver and gold are going to do very, very well. So we've get this. Uh, we're gonna now we're gonna move into the Wall Street Journal in this prospect of what I'll call indirect confiscation, but this is crazy what is going on. Before I do that, I want to say thanks to Pimbex, our channel sponsor. If you are thinking about converting an IRA to silver or gold, or if you are thinking about buying some bullion, check out Pimbex, P-I-M-B-E-X, Pimbex.com. All right. Throw them into the mix. See if you discover what I discovered. I trust them. All right, they have a great reputation. They've got great selection, great customer service, and great prices. Check out Pimbex. I think they're best. Best. I think Pimbex is best. P I M B E X. All right, here we go. Wall Street Journal article, just a few days old. Let me read this to you. Is the government going to basically be able to confiscate parts of your wealth? Okay, part of your silver and gold. Part of your house. This is crazy what is going on. The, uh, the, the, the title of this article, the wealth tax that you may already owe. If Supreme Court rules for the government in Moore versus the U.S., that's a case that's in front of the Supreme Court, all unrealized gains will be taxable under existing law. Unrealized gains. That means, let me just give you an example. We'll use an example. We'll use two examples, one with your house and one with silver and gold. If you bought a house for $100,000 a few years back, let's say 20 years ago, and you live in California, and now that house that you paid $100,000 for is now worth $500,000, you have $400,000 in unrealized gains. If you have some silver and you were smart and bought silver back in, you know, when it was $5 an ounce back in 1999, let's say you bought a thousand ounces for $5,000 and today that's worth $25,000, you have $20,000 in unrealized gain. And the government traditionally has not been able to touch that because the only time that there's a taxable event is if you sell. That's when you realize the gain. You paid 5000 for the silver, 
you sold it for $25,000, you're going to owe taxes on your gain of $20,000. But this, this could change everything. It says, imagine receiving a tax bill for the appreciation on your investments, the appreciation on your investments, including the equity in your home. This is from the Wall Street Journal. Before you've even sold them, it could happen if the government has its way at the Supreme Court. <clears throat> During Tuesday's oral arguments in Moore vs. the U.S., the justices, Supreme Court justices focused on the question of whether the 16th Amendment authorization of income taxes allows for taxing of unrealized gains. It has long been understood that income taxes apply only to realized gains those that have been actually received by the taxpayer, or effectively so much that the taxpayer has control over the funds, which is called constructive realization. Sorry, I had a nose itch there. So what this puts forth is the potential that the government could seize your profits, <laughs> okay? Let's, let's use an example with silver and gold. Let's say, uh, uh, sorry, somebody's calling me here. Let's say that uh, th th that you put $100,000 into gold a few years ago when it was $1,000 an ounce. Today, it's worth $200,000. If this court case is successful, the government could come to you and say, look, you've made a $100,000 profit on that gold. You haven't sold it, you've got it sitting in a vault somewhere, whatever. We want our cut. We want 30% of that. That belongs to us, okay? That is exactly what this case is talking about. Again, the idea with your house, you paid 100 for it. Now it's worth 500. The government comes and says, you've made 400,000 on your house. Even though you're still living in it, we want our cut. We want 25, 30%. It's called capital gains. I know, you've heard this a million times. I have a degree in accounting. I understand how capital gains, how accounting works. That's exactly what is being argued right now by the Supreme Court, and it's downright scary that the prospect of this occurring, what about, it's like your, even, you know, your, your stock portfolio. Let's say you put a uh, uh, hundred thousand into a stock mar into the stock market um, 15 years ago, and now it's worth a million. The government could come and say, look, you've made 900 grand profit, even though you haven't sold any of those stocks, we want our cut and we want it right now. But with metals, we get worried, right? We get worried about government confiscation. So if they know that you've got a certain amount of silver and they know what you paid for it and they know what it's worth now, they may want their cut of the profits. That's, as I read this, exactly what's going on. It feels a lot like those bank bail-ins that I think they did in Cyprus not too long ago. And some people say that it's like in the law already right now, there's all this confusing legal mumbo jumbo about whether or not you actually own your deposits at the bank or you own your stocks that are in a stock portfolio, but that the mechanism is in place. Potentially, I'm not trying to be doom and gloom, scare anybody or anything like that, but that they can come and take, right, bail in, right? Like, oh, the government, like, 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 and this is what I hear people and it's scared. It's scary. It scares me. Let me have a drink of coffee. Stay with me, folks. This prospect that they could do a bail-in, right? Let's say you have $30,000 in a bank account that some morning the government said, we needed money, so we took 10%, 20% of everybody's money. I think it gets even scarier with this prospect of CBDCs and, and the Fed Now system that electronically they're going to be able to do things like, like never, ever before, okay? And we've got a person at the White House working with our President Joe Biden named Lyle Brainerd, who a lot of people um, peg her as being a modern monetary theorist. 
right? Uh, you can read about it, make up your own mind. I'm not saying I agree or disagree with any of that. However, that's the big fear with the CBDCs. On top of the fact with the CBDC that there's all types of control issues that people are, you know, they, they like to use the examples from China, where in China, if you're social credit scoring, right, like they they know what you're spending your money on, they, they score you based on, uh, I guess, how good of a citizen they think you are, which then allows you to either do or not do certain things. I don't know. It all seems like rather Big Brother or Orwellian or Wheelian, whatever the case may be. But nonetheless, it's uh, something that I think we need to pay attention to, and we really need to pay attention to the Supreme Court case. I mean, that is crazy, guys. Can you imagine? I mean, like, you know, my, my house has gone up in value. I don't think it's worth what a lot of my neighbors think it's worth, but our house has gone up in value. It'd be like, I got to pay personal property taxes. Don't get me started. It's the end of the year in Missouri. I don't know where you live, but in Missouri, we got to pay personal property taxes on our house. And it's like twice as much now that it was like four or five years ago. It's ridiculous. I'm wondering what all these people in the St. Louis County are doing with all this money that they're getting. But nonetheless, it'd be like even worse, you know, if this case goes through that 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 you get a bill in the mail for tens of thousands, potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars because your house went up in value in our mind. And even though you haven't realized that value yet, we believe that you owe us this money on the profit, okay? And again, the same scary prospect could exist with your precious metals. I got a feeling there might be a little bit of uh, pushback from my fellow basement dwellers. Uh, uh, let, let, me, let me ask you this. Are you scared? And it's okay to be scared. We all get scared. I'm 53 years old. We're all still little kids wrapped up in big people's bodies. Most of you are around my age. It's okay for us to st still get scared, okay? Are you scared of, I'm going to type S, if you are scared to one degree or another of what the government might do in terms of confiscation or uh, collection of our assets in the future, type S in the, um, in the uh, uh, comment section, just like I did. I, I typed a capital S, <laughs> a capital S. Okay. Now we've been talking. Uh, now we've been talking a lot. Hey, happy birthday, me and my drone. 53. That's how old I am. Who else is 53? Let me ask you a question. Are you, look at all those S's coming through. Oh, yeah. Coin shop, Chris. Hey, guys. Hey, look. When we get to 200 thumbs up, it's right there. It's a thumb. You push it right there. Looks like this. Huh? You don't want to keep, you better push it or I'm going to keep showing you my ugly thumb. <laughs> it really helps the channel. It helps get this out to more and more people. Please give it a thumbs up. And when we get to 200 thumbs up, I ring the crazy loud bell. I'm going to have to get hearing aids soon because my ears ring when I'm done doing it. Maybe I'll get some uh, hearing protection things. So silver, hi ho silver, $85 silver, 85 guys here. But, but imagine this. I'm saying this to you right now. Silver just hit $85. Could we be saying that in 2024, right? Smitty, the silver bear, right there, right there, that one, right? Huh? His blindfold comes off. We talked about all these big factors going on. You, We haven't even, we're not even digging into the solar demand for silver, the electric demand for silver, all versus the silver demand. We got one more that we don't really talk, we haven't really talked a lot about on uh, here in the basement on the channel, but we're going to talk about that next. But first, this is the three second warning because you guys did it again. Thank you very much. We got 400 people here in the basement. We got 220 thumbs up. Huh? Our old friend Joe.
the Pinbax box dropped. Give me one second. Don't leave me. We got another component of silver we need to cover. Ooh, my ears are ringing. Uh-oh. The whole bear. All right. There we go. We don't want to lose any sponsorships. The sponsors make these videos possible. We got pimp. Oh. Hold on a second. <laughs> the first mining gold box. My mistake. Don't forget, check out first mining gold, right? If you're interested in junior mining stocks. All stocks are risky. Junior mining stocks are risky. I happen to think that a lot of the junior mining stocks right now offer still an unbelievable value opportunity. I'm a value-oriented investor. Check out First Mining Gold if you want to learn about a company that has 13 million ounces of gold in the ground in Canada. FirstMiningGold.com. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. Yes, Pimbex is best. That's my opinion, right? That's why I took them as a sponsor. Best price, best selection, best service. I saw that in the comments. Um, I And I own First Mining Gold shares, a lot of them for me. It's a big part of my portfolio. And I worked with Pimbex before I took them on as a sponsor. The only companies that I'll do sponsors with, even Weber helped us out a little bit. I love Weber Spices, okay, our companies or products that I use myself and, and that I believe in 100%. Okay. That's why like I'm nothing against people that are into vitamins and all that stuff. I don't do any supplements. So I'm not going to tell you about supplements. <laughs> anyway, there's another massive demand source for silver that nobody talks about because nobody knows how much is really being used? And that's the defense sector, right? The defense industry, right? The defense industry uses super high-tech equipment. And super high-tech equipment uh, requires a lot of high-tech electronics. You know electronics require, high-end electronics require a lot of silver. We've heard statements lately that each um, of these big missiles that we tend to shoot off from time to time, people say that, that, that there's the potential that, that these missiles have 500 ounces each of silver in them. Okay, that's a monster box of silver. Okay, and since, and it's not just the United States, the defense industry throughout the world operates under uh, in an environment of secrecy. That's part of the deal, right? So we don't really know how much silver. My, my friend John Little over at the pickaxe.com, the pickaxe substack, he does writing every day. I highly recommend you check him out. But he did some digging into the defense industry, and you know it's unbelievable the amount of silver that's in a in a fighter jet, the amount of silver that's in night. I mean, everything has a lot of silver in, it. and that's another uh, source of demand for silver that we just don't hear many people, if any people, really talking about. So, you know, when we talk about just what's going on big picture on so many levels you know we love gold i'm a real lover of silver as well i've always been kind of a silver guy the whole idea uh, of what's playing out right now what we what we likely will see in 2024 on many different levels geopolitically nationally here in the united states coupled with what we know are unbelievable demand sources for silver, okay? Solar, electronics, defense industry, the potential, right? Investment demand has been down. The potential for increase in investment demand. Are you feeling it? I'm starting to feel it right now, right? Geopolitical, national issues, all the BRICS countries, all the world that is that is loving gold and silver right now, 
the unbelievable demand profile, solar, electric cars, should I keep going, right? Electronics, artificial intelligence, the defense industry. And then you couple that, then you couple that with the fact uh, that investor demand is likely going to improve, right? It's been going down, it goes in little cycles, it's been going down. It'll start to go back up, okay? And then the big kahuna, of it all, because all markets in the end, right, it's a law of nature, are balanced out by supply and demand. And the supply of silver in the world is dwindling. The amount of silver coming out of the ground by the silver mines is dwindling. Okay, the amount of silver above ground that it can be that can absorb these um, these imbalances because there's been a you know, oh about 250 million more ounces of silver demanded this uh, last year than was supplied. That's called a deficit. They got that out of the above ground supplies. That's gonna it, that is dwindling. There's no other way. When there's more silver being demanded and used than is being supplied by the mines, that surplus that's sitting above ground, and many people say there's actually more gold above ground than silver. It's hard to argue. I don't, I don't know. I've never really been able to get that answer for sure. But nonetheless, the amount of silver above ground is shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. There's only one thing, guys, okay? Yeah, I know. We we don't we we measure our silver in ounces, but on a secondary level, we measure it in unicorn fart dust, US dollars. There's only one thing that fixes these imbalances. That's a higher silver price. And the market will prevail in the end. There's no other way about it. That's what we have to look forward to over the next year over the next decade. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. If you think, I'm gonna do this myself as well, if you think it's impossible or extremely unlikely that we ever see silver below 20 again, type 20, okay? I think it's extremely unlikely. Is it possible? Absolutely, but when I you know, that's what we do, right? We try to, we kind of look at everything that's going on out there. Thank you guys for all the thumbs ups. Don't forget that's right there. But we, we, we want to see the forest through the trees. <laughs> I, I know you. I know you're a deep thinking type person, an analytical person. Those are the people that come to these live streams. <clears throat> I don't want to, I don't want to build you up too much, but I will. You're also very intelligent, right? I mean, only intelligent people are interested in talking about these types of subjects and analyzing and trying to figure out what's going on. And when I look at all the moving pieces, my, you know, uh, uh, my, my, my supercomputer, right? We all have supercomputers and you choose to use your supercomputer a little more than the average bear. My supercomputer, when it when it thinks about silver going below $20 is like, it ain't going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Again, our, our days of seeing a silver price that starts with a one and only has two digits are gone. Our days of seeing a silver price that starts with a one and has two digits behind it, like 106 and 108, are what we can look forward to in the future. I just can't fathom a scenario. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'll, if, if we get silver below $20, um, I don't know what, I mean, I'll be, you're, you're going to see the basement get cleared out because I'm going to be having yard sales to convert <laughs> different things down here. I won't get rid of the bears, but to convert different things into physical metal. Hey, this, this live stream is not possible without the cooperation and support from the moderators. The moderators are great and eight is great. Do me a favor, type eight into the chat like I did. I'm gonna type it a few more times. These moderators make things run. Annie Oakley, Susie from Susie's house, <laughs> Rod's basement, Susie's house. Do you get that? She called herself Susie's house. That's my wife. Hi, Susie. Oh, 
I don't know where she is. She must not. Usually she sits right above me. Nonetheless, all right. Oh, look at all these eights. Look at all you guys, huh? This is awesome. Hello, Susie. I love you. Um, Susie makes it possible. Can we get to 300? I would really like to ring the gong, right? Where's the gong? Oh, there's the gong. See the gong? When we get to 300 thumbs up, I'll ring the gong. But you got to press the thumbs up. I'll ring the gong three times for you, basement dwellers. Can we get to 300? I don't know if we can, right? Right? Let's go to the comments here really quick. I don't have a basement. Sorry, Paul. I don't know what to tell you on that one, my friend. Canadian surfer, look at all these people who are expressing gratitude. Let's talk about, let's talk about what's going to happen tonight with the silver and gold market. What do you think is going to happen tonight with the silver and gold market? I will be shocked, right? Last Sunday was a shocker. Guys, remember, last Sunday night, gold got to $2,150 per ounce. I will be livid if tonight gold opens and is down $15, $20, $25. I just have to be honest with you. I will be extremely angry. Okay, what I anticipate is that we're going to have a slight upward movement in the gold and silver price tonight. What I anticipate as we get, what, two weeks from tomorrow will be Christmas, and we, we'd been promised $2,100 uh, gold by Christmas, that the next few weeks could be a slow, steady slog up to 2100 that on christmas we will have 2100 dollars gold and then as we head into tw uh, 2024 that that move the real move from 21 to 26 that i'm predicting that i really believe could happen by may right that that is going to take hold <clears throat> that we're going to start to see some craziness unfolding remember Big interview with Andy Sheckman, okay, coming out here in just a few hours on the channel. Listen to what Andy has to say about what he sees unfolding right now and how that will impact 2024. I just, I, you know, I don't know. I feel very, very, very comfortable holding precious metals as we head into 2024. Do you? Let me ask you a question, okay? Whoa, 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 whoa. We're almost to 300 thumbs up. <laughs> Come on, guys. Man, we can do it. I didn't think we could do it this morning. Come on. Please, if you haven't pressed the thumbs up, it's a, it's a little accomplishment that us basement dwellers like to celebrate. Um, but as we head into next year, we can't underestimate the, 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 the importance of what's going to go on on two levels. There's two levels to this with the presidential election. It is nasty, 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 nasty. So we've got the social level, right, which could create a flight to safety uh, within the metals. But I'm telling you, I'm t this is a fact, right? They're going to be pulling out all the stops next year. There's a reason why they didn't put, they, they suspended the debt limit. They suspended it. That's so that this coming year, they can do all kinds of magic unicorn fart dust money tricks to try to juice the economy, to try to juice everything, to basically pay people off to keep the existing uh, regime in power. So be prepared, okay? Now, silver and gold, sniff that out. We know that. It's going to be a good year for silver and gold. Let me ring that gong. You guys did it. All right, 300. 300, three rings of the gong, one for each 100 thumbs up. The gong, the, the solid gold gong. Don't forget, we got a train whistle for 500 thumbs up. I appreciate everybody being here, okay? 400 people. 400 basement dwellers on a Sunday morning. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. I will put out a new piece of content every day. We love to talk about silver and gold, but more importantly, we love coming together with each other. This is a massive growing community of good, good people. We got great monitors. We've got great 
basement dwellers that come here every day to join us, right? And man, it can be challenging dealing with these ups and downs in the market. But let me let me remind you of something. One week ago today, we had $2,150 gold. We had $26 silver, okay? We got punched in the gut like never before. I mean, boom, the worst, right? Kicked in the coconuts, however you want to say it, all right? It was horrific what happened between Sunday night and the close of the market on Monday, and then it continued through the week. Guys, if we can deal with that, which we have, right? You're okay. You're watching right now from wherever you are in the world. You're okay, right? That makes us stronger. That makes precious metals investors stronger. And I, and I, I you know, look, <laughs> we could be sitting uh, two weeks from now with gold at $1,800. I don't think that's going to happen, okay? I think two weeks from now, we're going to have $2,100 gold. But we could be sitting with $1,800 gold. And right now, you're sitting here after, after, and you're fine, and we're fine together after having endured what was one of the worst, I think, in my decades of following the medals, one of the worst beatdowns in all time. I remember it was probably four, I don't know if you remember this other time where it was just as bad, but it was about four or five years ago. Uh, Susie and I, had. it was a Sunday night. We just dropped off the girls at my mom and dad's and we went, there's a place in St. Louis called Old Town St. Charles. It's where Lewis and Clark took off from. Anyway, we were at a restaurant having dinner, which we rarely do. She'll attest to that. Uh, but nonetheless, we were having, and I looked at my phone to look and to see something, and I saw that gold was down $100. Remember that Sunday night slam down, right? I think it was probably gold was more in the 1700 range at that point, and it got slammed 100 bucks on a Sunday night. And we survived, and look where we are now. Let's remember, okay? Wow, silver, what, 2350 or so an ounce, okay? Uh, when silver was at 17 a year and a half ago, we'd be very happy. Gold's at 2000 And I think gold can hold this line at 2000 No guarantees. I don't have a crystal ball. Don't make any financial decisions based on that or anything that I say. However, if gold can hold that line, right? Let me show you. <laughs> I don't want you to leave me over this, okay? We're together forever, right? I told you I'm doing this for the rest of my life, but I got to pull it out. I just got to pull it out. That's the silver price in Venezuela. It went up 277 times in one darn month, basically. 200 times in one month. Guys, that's still in play. That's silver. That's still in play. But that same pattern is still in play for our friend gold. Cup and handle over a long period of time. And when it really, really, really breaks. I mean, we had a new all-time high in gold last Sunday. I mean, and then they shattered us. They're they're doing they're doing psychological warfare on precious metals investors, and we're okay with it, right? We're okay with it, right? Don't forget, okay? Don't forget as well. When you look at that silver chart, 19, I was having my discussion with my friend Patrick this morning, who's a stacker, right? We were talking about, he's like, well, gold, our silver hit $50 back in 1980. You know what that is in today's dollars? That's like, uh, that's like $93.14, and that's based on official inflation data. So we can see unbelievable returns. And and you know what? You got, this gets me fired up. <laughs> Things are worse now. Okay? Things are worse. Okay, in the 70s? And I was I was 1 year old. I remember this. In the 70s, silver and gold skyrocketed. Because of stagflation, because of high interest rates, because of inflation, because of geopolitical issues. You take any of those issues that drove silver and gold, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, right? Send me an email. Tell me I'm wrong about this. But I'll put forward this hypothesis. <laughs> the Ron's Basement Hypothesis. You take any of those factors 
that really drove the silver price and gold price. Silver was up, I don't know, 20 something times. Gold was up 18, eight times. I mean, up big, massive gains in the 70s. Take any of those factors that drove the metals crazy in the 70s. All those, any of those factors, they're worse now. They're more exaggerated now. They've been escalated now, okay? Escalated. Do you like that word? So potentially, potentially, when it, and look, all we really want is to preserve our wealth and be safe. But potentially, there could be incredible gains in the metals. And that word escalated, let's, let's focus on that here for just one minute. Escalation. Because you look at what the Fed, what the Fed has done, right? Starting... Starting in the 70s, really, but then let's just fast forward to the great uh, the the tech bubble when it burst. Let's let's fast forward to long term capital management. Remember that one when that burst. Let's go to the great financial crisis where no bankers. Remember the bankers got the best deal in the world, right? They either get bailed out or they get a bonus. Either way, right? They get to take your money and gamble with it, okay? And if they win, they get a big bonus. If they lose. They get bailed out by the government. Nonetheless, thank you for that super chat just came through. Wow, Michael K., thank you. That's the first super chat of the day. Super appreciated. We'll go super far toward Christmas for the girls. But nonetheless, everything is escalated, right? All right let's just, those bankers, they got the best deal going. You're a banker. You give your bank a million dollars. They make a bet, right? They're going to pay you 1%, and they're going to try to make 5%. If their bet pays off, they get a big bonus. It's called the double B plan, okay? The, it's the triple B plan. It's the basement bank bonus bailout, quadruple B plan. So they take your they take your million dollars. They make a bet. If it wins, they get to make all this profit. They make a big bonus. If they make a bad bet with your million and they lose well then they get to go to the fed and say we made a mistake but we're a systematically important bank you need to help us we need the we need money from the fed right yeah okay anyway back to escalation <laughs> long-term capital management out oh, during the 70s and 80s right remember black monday they bailed it out the plunge protection team blah 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 uh, then we get to 2007, 2008. I'm not going to go down the banker road again, but they bailed out the system then. Uh -huh. And then a couple more times, 2000, was it 15, 16, the repo crisis. And then we had the big C-19 situation where they just printed like 40% of the U.S. dollars, which they'd already printed a lot up to then. Then they printed 40% more. But if you notice something, everything's gotten bigger and bigger escalated 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 <sighs> when things get hairy they're going to they're going to escalate even more right and they're going to do it much more quickly and that's when i believe that people who uh, and we we're you know we're, we might be just one in 236 people in the united states but we're amongst a much bigger group of people, right? We may be the outcast, right? The rebels, right? People may scoff and say, oh, silver and gold, blah, blah. Well, we're amongst a pretty strong group of people who over thousands of years, <laughs> thousands of years, have relied on precious metals to help preserve their wealth. It's going to be interesting, guys. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. Have a great remainder of your Sunday, and I'll see you soon.